Thank you so much for joining me today on Vision to Reality. We are continuing in our series based on my new book, The Promise of Purpose. And we've been talking about chapter 10 and going over four keys to help us to walk out our purpose successfully. And these keys go, they transcend and go across everybody's lives because of their biblical principles and some wisdom that we can learn from what Jesus shared with us in the Bible and learn from each other and best practices so that we don't have to go through that school of hard knocks on our journey to reach the destiny that God has for us. So we've talked about how to be a finisher, the law of attraction and favor, how important it is that we have financial reserves. And today we are going to talk about the fourth and final point, which is ask questions and be a lifelong learner. How many of you would agree that Jesus is our best example of an effective learner? And one of the things that's so interesting is that he led often by asking questions. Matter of fact, uh, there's about 307 questions that Jesus asked in the Bible. And I find that very interesting. You know, when growing up, uh, my parents were really great at this. Maybe we would come home from something and uh, maybe they knew that we were up to something or something happened at school. And we would sit down and instead of just kind of, you know, barraging us with, uh, you know, telling us what to think or what to do, they would ask questions like, how was your day? <laughs> what did you do today? And I find the same thing with leaders and I find myself doing this as well. What do you think about this? Or if this was something you were presented with, I might bring to the team, what are your thoughts on this? Why is that effective? And what are the types of questions that Jesus actually asked in the Bible that you and I can learn from? Well, one of the keys here is asking questions shows humility, right? Also, it's a way for us to help lead the conversation and maybe learn more about the circumstances of something prior to just jumping in and making a decision. So I'm going to read this statement to you. Jesus is the best example of asking questions and leading the situation. Surround yourself with people who, knew, who know more than you. That takes humility. Uh, one of the things you learn in from leaders like John Maxwell, who was recently at an event uh, at Karis Bible College that I was blessed to be a part of. One thing that you learn from somebody that is an expert at leadership like John Maxwell is that they are continually learning, but they also are smart enough, or you might say humble enough, to surround themselves with people that know more about different subjects, topics, and areas than they do. And actually, John talked about this at the event. Uh, he can't be an expert at everything, and you and I can't be an expert at everything. So instead of looking at a situation and feeling like, oh my goodness, if I can't do it all, I'm maybe not strong enough or I, I'm not successful, Instead, taking the approach that, wow, if I recognize that maybe I don't have all the expertise in every area that I need for this project, this business, or any endeavor, so the smartest thing for me to do is to recognize it 
and in humility, go and find people that know more. That is a trait of a really strong leader. And you might even bring that into parenting or any situation that you're in. You know, as a mom, especially when I was a single mom, uh, I had to really lean on the Holy Spirit uh, very much because I didn't have all the answers on how to raise a boy, particularly when I became a single mom when Levi was 16. So what I see a lot of single moms try to do is to try to be both a mom and a dad. And I realized by the grace of God that I did not have the ability to be both a mom and a dad to Levi. So you might say, well, how do you figure that out as a single parent? That's a great question. And the answer that I got that, that I felt like God was leading me into with this is that, um, do you know what you need to learn from some people? So for example, I read the book Wild at Heart by John Eldridge, Fathered by God. Those were amazing, amazing books for me as a single parent. Matter of fact, I wish I would have read those uh, before. I would have been a much better mom and even wife, you know, before I read, uh, after I learned some things in those books, I, I saw a lot of things that I was doing wrong. But anyway, I just decided that I would connect with people that knew about fathering or how to receive fathering from God and also to actively put my faith and connect that with bringing uh, men in Levi's life in our life that were uh, safe, trustworthy, and that would be able to father him in different areas. And I'm telling you, once I had that understanding that I couldn't be everything, I couldn't be a mom and a dad. So I needed to tap into how God would father Levi uh, and what my part in that was. Wow, God was so faithful to bring people into our lives that would do things like teach him how to serve, teach him how to fish, teach him how to fix a washer and dryer, teach him how to do construction. All these things that I didn't have the ability as a mom to impart to him, but things that he needed. Uh, one of the statements that uh, John Eldridge makes in his book is that, you know, masculinity is bestowed from masculinity, meaning that I don't have as a mom the ability to impart masculinity to Levi. And once I understood that, I was, you know, more humble and open to like, okay, God, you're going to have to be the father in Levi's life and show me how to walk this through since you're not here physically for me to have a conversation with that I can see. He's in here, but I wasn't sitting across the table or he wasn't, you know, physically with us in this natural world through all of these challenges. Well, that's an example as a single mom, how I just realized that uh, even though I was a mom for 16 years, I had to be a lifelong learner in the area of being a mom to a teenage son. Well, the same thing can apply and does apply in our business. How many of you, when you walked into a situation, maybe you're in charge of a group of people, maybe you're a CEO of a company, that you walk in and with your knowledge or your understanding of a situation, <laughs> You just made an assumption and that assumption was wrong. I wish I could tell you that's never happened to me, but it's happened to me a lot, which is why I kind of had to learn this. And it's like, I don't think that's working for me just to think I know everything. Well, when we are in business, one of the best things that we can do to, to really leverage the potential and the gifts uh, that God has put in the people around us is to ask questions is to find out what do you think about this? Recently, uh, we are we took on a client. I have an agency, Karen Conrad Agency, where we do marketing and mainly help nonprofits and other businesses as well. So we connected with and signed on with a ministry um, that we just really felt like led to be able to work with. And we had a debate going um, within my team on an email, like how to approach this email. 
And so I've asked my team and, and really encourage them. And I do this as a mom as well. Like, I really want to hear from you. And uh, I told my team and, and, and tell them all the time, like, this is not just Karen Conrad. I might have to make a final decision on something just like a parent would as any leader would. But for me to make that decision, I first need to learn from people that might know something about a topic. Well, in this situation, I had an idea of how I felt the email should go. And then Lorinda on my team, um, which I so am so grateful, she had a different opinion. And in an email exchange, she just really um, let me know like, hey, I'm not trying to uh, like go against what you're saying or be difficult here. But because she was so passionate about it and she's very knowledgeable, she's a copywriter or an editor, very knowledgeable about writing, she really had a strong opinion and knowledge to back up why we should do the emails a different way than what I was seeing. Well, you know, I looked at that and I was like, you know what? She is passionate about this. She knows more about this than I do. I'm going to listen to her and I am going to go the direction that she is recommending. And you know, our results with everything is so much better because I'm asking questions, wanting to hear why, and also surrounded by a team that is willing to give me their honest opinion and maybe not being afraid of me pushing back or me thinking that uh, they're out of line. Well, this is really a key for us to reach our destiny and our God-given potential. Because if we walk through life where we think we know everything, we're going to miss a whole lot of information. And also, we're probably going to make some decisions that is not best for us. So let's follow the example of Jesus. Jesus surrounded himself with disciples and he led by asking questions. So I'm going to share a scripture with you, and then I'm going to give you some examples of questions that Jesus asked that just kind of opened my eyes, and I hope will open your eyes too. Like, wow, he really asked a lot of questions, and we need to learn from it. Okay, here's the scripture I want to share first. This is Proverbs 18, 12 through 13, and this is from the Passion Translation. It says this, a man's heart is the proudest when his downfall is nearest, for he won't see glory until the Lord sees humility. Listen before you speak, for to speak before you've heard the facts will bring humiliation. I love how this is worded. And the Passion Translation just kind of lays things out that's really easy for me to understand. And this is very, very clear. And I love the, the purpose behind this is like, hey, I'm trying to prevent you from being humiliated. That's pretty strong, isn't it? So when we listen to this and we, we uh, take the word of God and apply it, this clearly um, encourages us to be a lifelong learner, ask questions, and don't make the assumption that we know everything going into a situation before learning more. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to share with you some questions that Jesus asked. All right, you might want to write these down because these are questions that he asked. And I believe that they're questions that, you know, that you and I should take a look at and answer before we read what the answer was in the Bible from the person he was addressing. But these are really uh, questions to help us to ponder some things uh, that Jesus asked very purposefully. Here we go. Uh, this is Matthew 5, 47. Jesus asked, and if you greet your brethren only, what is unusual about that? Do not unbelievers do the same? Hmm, that's kind of pondering. It's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, we are called to a higher level in relationship with each other. And I'm not going to comment on all of these or this would go on too long, but I just want to point out some of these questions. Uh, the next one is Matthew 6, 27. This is a good one. If you are like me, sometimes I get a little stressed out or tend to worry. He says this, can any of you by worrying add a single moment to your lifespan? 
it's like, oh my goodness, that really hits like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> so this is a good question for you and I to ask if we find ourselves in a worried state. I actually could have used this question yesterday. I should have studied this more <laughs> yesterday. All right, um, here's another one. Uh, Matthew 6, 28, these are all kind of together. Why are you anxious about clothes? Oh my goodness, have you ever had a day where you, you like tried on three outfits, four outfits, nothing looks right. I've had days like that and I would actually kind of get grumpy because I felt like it didn't look good in anything. And here is another time. If I would have seen this, I could have said, hmm, why are you anxious about clothes? Oh yeah, that's probably not a top priority in our life, right? Here's another one. This is Matthew 7, 2. Oh, this is so good. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, yet fail to perceive the wooden beam in your own eye. Oh boy, that's a thoughtful one. And that's like when you get in those conversations or you have those critical thoughts, this would be a very good question to keep in mind, right? All right, a couple more here. Matthew 7, 16. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Hmm, that's a very interesting question and we'd want to learn more about the context of that. But if Jesus said it, there's a reason for it and something we can learn from. Okay, and then I'll just, uh, I'll leave us with this one uh, <laughs> for the questions. But Matthew 9, 4, Jesus asked the question, why do you harbor evil thoughts? Oh, that's a great question. Wow. Ask a lot of questions and be a lifelong learner. All right, so I have a special message for you uh, that I'd like you to watch. It's real short and I'll be back in just a couple minutes and we'll finish up the promise of purpose. Are you at a place in life that is probably not God's best for you? Do you feel indecisive or insecure? Do you feel like you're stuck in a rut? Maybe you even feel like you've lost sight of your real purpose in life. I'm Karen Conrad, and believe me, I have been there. If you're like me, a fresh dose of purpose could really help right now. In my new book, The Promise of Purpose, I share several divine strategies from the Word of God that will help establish His purpose in your life. Join me at promiseofpurpose.com. I am so convinced that this book, The Promise of Purpose, will help you that I'm going to send it to you for free. Thanks for considering this special offer for The Promise of Purpose. Welcome back. This has been such a fun series and we are actually at the end of the series, The Promise of Purpose. And as I've mentioned throughout the teaching, um, I'm hitting the highlights and covering things, but really the book really goes in depth on, uh, on the teachings. And also, as you just heard about, we've got a very special promise of purpose package or bundle that includes a journal, the um, bookmark, it includes a declaration page, you get a pen, you get a mug, a really cute mug, uh, and then we also have this private Facebook community, and I just want to encourage you personally, please think about joining uh, that community. Do you know, it's so fun. I go in there several times a week and just love hearing the comments. And one of the things I think that is so special about it is I'm seeing people minister and encourage each other. And really, that is the purpose of the community. And then also, I want you to take advantage of the 21 free video devotionals. I take 21 topics from the book and I just give you kind of a mini teaching on that in a devotional format that I really believe will be a blessing for you. So we're gonna take the remaining time on the program today and I'm gonna recap some things that we've talked about in this series. So this would be a really great time for you to take notes and um, you know, just jot down some things as you go through it and it'll really help you too as you go through this book. Uh, you could even start a, 
a Bible study, a Promise of Purpose Bible study, or join me online as we go through this. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm just so convinced um, that this will help you because this, this, what I'm teaching in here and sharing with you changed my life. I mean, drastically, dramatically set me on a path that God had planned for me instead of the path that I had for myself. And I just want to encourage you that what God has planned for you is so, so much better and so much bigger than anything you and I can possibly imagine. I feel like he has so much more, you know, trust and confidence in us than we have in ourselves. But that's like uh, exactly how this works. We lean into him. Uh, he completes us. He guides us. He directs us. He protects us. He gives us the confidence, his righteousness. And in all those things, we are able to really walk out that fulfilling life that he has planned for us. Okay, so let's hit some of the points here that we covered in this series. Um, here is something, this is a great kind of quote that you can write down. Every opportunity for success I'm presented with also has the risk of failure. But we know that when we are in line with God's purpose and plans, that we already have that success. But it's, it's helpful to recognize that there's just sometimes there is a, you know, risk of failure, knowing that that's actually something that is embedded in that opportunity on purpose, you might say, to help us get out of ourselves and lean into God for that supernatural, what we call AQ, anointing quotient. The biblical definition of success is this. Persistence to accomplish a desired outcome, no matter how long it takes. Failure is this, quitting before the desired outcome is reached. Isn't that awesome? Again, if you do uh, what God is showing you to do or have just a heart to do what God is showing you to do, even though we make mistakes, we know that we will reach success. We just don't quit before we get there. Amen. Here's some scriptures that supports uh, us just really having that confidence and not being afraid of failure. This is in Proverbs 24, 16, and this is in the Passion Translation. For the lovers of God may suffer adversity and stumble seven times, but they will continue to rise over and over again. But the unrighteous are brought down by just one calamity and will never be able to rise again. Wow, that's so encouraging for us that are in the family of God, followers of Jesus, sons and daughters of God. We may hit adversity, we may stumble, but God is telling us that we will continue to rise over and over again. I think that's a word for somebody. <laughs> All right, now that you've discovered your purpose, it's time to embrace any holy discontent and see where the Lord will take you. Do you know, sometimes there are seasons. Um, sometimes there is something God is calling us to. There might be a shift in our life and we can become a little bit discontented. And those are the times that we ask God, okay, I'm feeling this discontent, or maybe things just aren't going in the direction that I thought. Is this one of those times that we need to shift? What do you have for me today, Lord? You won't complete anything in God's will without his help. That's part of being a child of God. Remember, he walks alongside you and he wants to help you. He wants to be involved and be that supernatural help in our life. Okay, remember uh, we talked about this in the previous episode. Some of the things that you can expect to receive from him in pursuit of your purpose are his glory, favor, power, authority, wisdom, divine appointments, and open doors, as well as God's grace, anointing, passion, and pruning in your life. 
When God puts something on your heart that seems scary, remember he is the God of the impossible. I'm just going to uh, share this scripture with you. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give you it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. Ooh, that is so awesome. That is James 1, 5 out of the Passion Translation. Keep a passion for God. When you hit rough patches or challenges, which we all do, sometimes we're tempted to go back and question if we heard God. A passion for the Lord gets you through those hardships, knowing that he has called you to do what you are pursuing. Amen. Also, just a reminder that when God gives you a big assignment that he has already put in you the skills, the abilities, the gifts, and the talent. He has equipped you for your God-given purpose in life. Remember that character and economic capacity are an important part of your pursuit of purpose. When we line up with God, we can know increase is going to be on that path towards our destiny. So when we focus on our character and understanding finances and being a good steward, that is going to keep us on that successful path and in a position that we won't have to experience the sorrow that money sometimes brings to people that don't know God. And finally, I'm going to give you a couple statements here uh, to encourage you. If you have been discouraged or you have maybe let go of something that you thought that God at one time called you to do, I want you to pick your dream up and let the Lord know that you're excited about moving forward. You are equipped to launch into success. And finally, the purpose you were created for is right around the corner. You are equipped to step out into your destiny. I believe that this is definitely the first day of the rest of your life uh, when you take this and say, God, I'm ready to move forward. I want to hear from you. Please let me know about how pursuing the promise of purpose in your life the God-given destiny that he has for you. I want to hear how this book and this teaching has helped you through it so we can share testimonies and encourage others. Thank you so much and God bless you.